behind this one. Well, good afternoon, everybody. I hope you're having a fantastic turnaround Tuesday afternoon or morning if you're in uh, the West Coast. We just uh, are so excited about today's broadcast and the precision prophetic revelation that the Lord is giving. First off, though, everybody on this broadcast looks a little bit more tan. I guess you went out to see the eclipse and uh, I guess... The time before, during, and after it did you pretty well. So uh, it was a prophetic moment, wasn't it? People are rebuking other Christians for having some kind of uh, eclipse uh, addiction or something like that. I don't know what they're saying, but it's like it's a phenomenon, and it's not something that is uh, separated from the Bible. It actually is Bible. And it's not just Bible. It's for the end times. It's uh, the the eclipses are going to have meanings in the end times that they don't have during other successive generations. So, I mean, that's just scripture, the book of Joel. The, we'll get into that in just a little bit. It was fascinating, the conversation that Jolene and I had this afternoon. We were driving back from an errand, and Jolene turned to me and she said, you know, I told God when I got saved, I never really wanted to live in the end times. I, I didn't know what to say there. I was kind of like, huh. She said that many <laughs> times before. And, and I almost said, well, you are in the end times, so Jesus is returning soon. Please look busy. That was kind of not the right response. So I just said, well. Uh, too late. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, he, Jesus doesn't <laughs> listen to me. <laughs> oh, get out. You're one of his favorites for sure. <laughs> we are going to explore today some things, dynamics that are related to the intersection between end times and real times. Did you guys appreciate uh, the, the graphic here? I mean, that graphic's pretty good, right? That's stellar. In, in, Whoever put it together did a phenomenal job, i got to tell you. I appreciate that very much. And, and in some graphics, you know, we put all our pictures. This time I only put Chris in, so. <laughs> Chris, would you go ahead and start us off? Absolutely. Father, we so are so grateful. And in spite of the challenges, Lord, and the things that we know um, are ahead, we are grateful to be alive including Jolene, at this hour of history. You've called us, <laughs> Lord, you've called us to be a part of, uh, of the redemptive, redemptive arc of history that is bringing and reconciling all things to your original intention. And Lord, today we just thank you for enlightening the eyes of our understanding. We thank you, Father, for causing our hearts to become sensitive and pliable in your hands that you're molding and shaping us, Lord, into the vessels of honor uh, that will see uh, this um, uh, turnaround, Lord, brought to full bear. And so, Lord, we thank you for the presence of your spirit among us today. We ask, Father, that you would anoint, it, anoint us afresh, quicken us, Lord, together, and cause us uh, to move in sync with you. We bless this time in Jesus' name. 
Amen. And Father, we just thank you that we are alive and we are able to see you moving in a powerful way. We thank you, Lord, for your spirit. We thank you that yes. we are prophetically in tune, Lord, that so many people go through life not having any idea what's coming around the corner or what's going to happen. But Lord, you warn us and show us, and we celebrate the fact that you've chosen to gift us prophetically so we know what mm. the Bible is saying and we know how to interpret the times and seasons. Mm. Father, I thank you so much for your gentle care for us and how you um, warn us and give us steps to live in this season and in this time. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Well, if you're not convinced, if you weren't convinced before that we are living in the end times, well, maybe after the eclipse, you're now convinced. Uh, the fact of the matter is the end times actually began probably with the birth of John the Baptist and then Jesus. But certainly, by the time of the book of Acts, the end times was in full swing. How do I know that? Because uh, when Peter saw the Holy Spirit come in power, um, and they all experienced the move of God, they, they became filled with the Holy Spirit, tongues of fire rested on them all. The, the Holy Spirit made such a, a, a powerful impression when he returned. <laughs> he knows how to make an entrance, right? that uh, the whole of Jerusalem came to see what was going on. They heard the sound of a mighty rushing wind. The Bible says they all heard the sound of a mighty rushing wind. It wasn't just the disciples. God was making an entrance back into Jerusalem. The presence and power of God, the glory of God had vacated. Ezekiel saw the glory vacate. And the upper room disciples saw and experienced the glory of God being restored after Jesus died and rose again for our sins. The glory of God, the presence and power of Holy Spirit left the premises, evacuated the premises because the people had chosen sin and idolatry. And we hadn't seen that kind of move of the Spirit since that time. Very important to understand that. So really, uh, when Jesus was baptized and the Holy Spirit dwelt in him in fullness bodily, that was an amazing, amazing experience. The Holy Spirit came like a dove. But then Holy Spirit came and rested on the disciples. The church was officially birthed. So that birthing time period really marks the beginning of the end times. How do I know that? Again, because Peter quoted the book of Joel. It said, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. That's an important understanding. So we have been in the end times, what the Bible calls the end times, since at least, at the very least, the book of Acts. Okay? So if anybody asks... Yes, you are living in the end times. You're living in the last days. But every successive generation thought that they were living in the last days based on the challenges that they experienced. And we're beginning to understand, we're writing a book called End Times in Real Time. Uh, our publisher, Destiny Image, I don't know how, our friends persuaded us to write this book <laughs> of all books we could write. But uh, we're kind of in the midst of it. And then as, as I'm struggling to get chapter one and chapter two put out there and understand the totality of what I'm experiencing, all of a sudden there is an eclipse. If you remember, we started off this year actually warning how the enemy was going to try and X us out. Warnings on a personal level and on a national level. But that God was going to establish his bridal canopy over the land. We re-released this prophecy, I guess, in 20, uh, 
2023, late 2023, in response to what God was speaking to us. But the actual word came from Cindy Jacobs from back in 1996. She saw a time was coming where the enemy would X out our, try to X out our nation. But that God, if we will partner with him, will release his covenant covering over the land. That's really what we want, right? But it really freaked me out to see that uh, the pathway of the solar eclipse, the second solar eclipse that happened yesterday, uh, formed the other half of an X over our nation. One uh, eclipse in 2017 went across the nation uh, from, I think, uh, northwest to southeast, something like that. And this one went from uh, southwest to northeast. And literally an X was formed over our nation. The center point of that X was uh, a region of southern Illinois called Little Egypt. Little Egypt. Mm. And as I began to pray over that part, I heard the Holy Spirit say that the enemy is, again, trying to X you out, yes, but I am establishing my covenant covering over the nation, number one. But number two, I put the X in Exodus. And this is marking a time of Exodus for our nation. Let my people go out of idolatry and out of sin and subjugation. This is the word of the Lord that there is an Exodus. And there's a, a, a great prophet, Jolene, you had... Oh, I read something. I think Veronica West had had a total word about it as well. And John was like, you've got to be kidding me because he was just writing up what he had heard from the Lord that morning. And Veronica West put out a very similar word that she, she uh, had this visionary experience. And it was about X and it was about the Lord just putting an X like floating in the, and I didn't really read it, but floating in the spirit realm. And that she said that the Lord really talked to her, that that X is because of Exodus. So I'm like, John, you are hearing the exact same thing. I mean, he had told me about it that morning. And then she puts that word out in the afternoon. I'm like, Lord, you are speaking loud and clear. He who has ears to hear. We got a little more to share on that, but first, Chris, what's the Lord showing you about this X and the move of the Spirit in this hour, potentially in Exodus? Well, it's uh, it's interesting too that today's date um, is Nisan one. Yes, and, sir. Uh, and of course, we all know Exodus twelve two, where the Lord said that this day would be the beginning of months for Israel, it marked a change of the times. Uh, it marked a reset, and um, and I really, I really believe, John, that this word that you're hearing about the Lord saying thundering to you, I, I, I put the X in Exodus. We know what happened, what what began to take place uh, on this very day a few thousand years ago, that uh, the yoke of slavery and bondage was broken, and the Lord took it took His people from uh, an identity of slavery and subjugation, took them through the waters of the Red Sea. This is what Paul reports in 1 Corinthians 10, 1 and 2. He talks about how they all moved through the sea and it was a baptism. And so what looked like just an escape route to them was actually a birthing canal. Come on, Chris. And they moved They moved through the waters of the Red Sea. The waters broke, cleaved in two, and a new person, a new people was birthed through the Red Sea. Oh, good. And, and that's, that's what I believe we're looking at. There's a new birth that we've been speaking about. John, you've been prophesying forever uh, in the words of Abraham Lincoln, this new birth um, that we believe and know that is going, that's taking place even in our nation. Um, but particularly, I believe this is uh, taking place among the people of God. And so this is, to me, John, uh, th everything that we're seeing in the heavens and even, and I'm not, I don't want to get ahead, but even this earthquake. That we, uh oh, he <laughs> brought it up. There he goes. <laughs> all of these things. I'm going to leave that for you. I'm leaving it up for you. But I just think that all of these things are bearing witness to the reality 
that uh, we are in an Exodus movement. We're in a new birth um, that God is bringing forward. I mean, that's what we have been uh, interceding for, contending for this whole time. Yes, sir. It's a new birth of freedom, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. And uh, we saw how we need to have an exodus out of the Pharaoh system yes. that is trying to establish an antichrist expression of dictatorship. Yes. Let my people go. Exodus out of Egypt and out of Babylon. Really, really important. No coincidence that uh, uh, this Gaza war is going on and there is a physical representation of a spiritual reality uh, with Iran pounding uh, uh, Israel on all fronts through Hamas and through Hezbollah, and maybe even directly. And then it's no coincidence that the border between Israel and, and uh, uh, Egypt is the last stronghold of Hamas. We shared a prophetic word last week that God was combining this Passover. He was combining the miracles of Exodus with the miracles of Acts. We launched the, the Watch of the Breaker last week with that focus, knowing that the eclipse was coming. And uh, so let's get into the earthquake and this kind of stuff. I'm just going to read uh, the rest of, not the entire rest of the passage, but another portion of the passage um, it will come about in that day that I will pour out my spirit on all mankind. This is Joel 2, beginning with verse 28. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will have dreams. Your young men will have visions. And on every male and female servant, I will pour out my spirit. I will display wonders in the sky and on the earth. Blood, fire, columns of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. And it will come about on that day, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So, listen, I know that every 18 months, there's a solar eclipse somewhere in the earth. Okay? So we have to, this is part of our responsibility uh, as kind of being assigned by the Lord to be forerunners in the end times. Okay, and I believe we are in the latter part of the end times. Make no mistake about it. I'll get there in a second. But we need to judge and discern because there's going to be times when there will be eclipses. It's not going to mean as much as the one that just occurred. And, and I'm going to get into that in just a second about why this one was so significant. But I think it's also significant if you want to see an eclipse a solar eclipse, let's just say you missed your opportunity for a, a, a vacation uh, uh, on site, you know, going to, so many people traveled all over the nation to see it, but so many people didn't. Um, what I'm saying to you here is the next opportunity that you will have to see a total solar eclipse in your lifetime will be in Egypt in 2027. Wow. Just saying. Let my people go. I just want to interject here. I find it fascinating, actually, that um, this time period, God has told us to extend our fast and our prayer time clear up to Passover. Yeah. And if you look at April 8th to Passover, which is April 29th, we are exactly on the 21 days that Daniel took and the angels took to fight the principalities to then free Daniel and his people as well. I find that very fascinating. We started out on a time frame and the Lord extended it and, and he's been talking to us a year at years about an extended time of Passover. And here we have a 21 day period between when God closes the book, it seems, on one time period, 21 days, and it says the angels and God fought against the principality that, that freed Daniel in, the, in Persia, and here we are 
21 days exactly from April 8th until Passover. God is so specific. Even yesterday during the eclipse, it started at 222. It became its oh height best at 333. God was saying from 222, and I prayed that entire period from 222 to 333. And the Lord had me up in the middle of the night praying from 222 to 333 very Whoa. specifically the night before because it seems like we are going from from the curses and the things from Isaiah 2222 to to 333 is something the witchcraft uses freemasonry uses it the lord is sweeping away right now and this next 21 day period we need to focus up until passover when the spirit of death over our nation passes over and i promise that baby will live in jesus name mm. well, it's interesting yeah it's great, interesting too i was just was going to say jolene that the 21 days between now and and passover um and you spoke about Daniel. And of course, we know that what was being dealt with in those 21 days is the Prince of Persia. Right. And I, I, I'll just leave that where it is. But um, I just think that's an interesting note as well. But here's, here's something. 40 days, exactly 40 days from April 8th. Uh, if you count 40 days, we end up on Shavuot, Pentecost. Uh, and so 40 days from April 8th, we end up at May 19th and, uh, which is Pentecost Sunday. And so there is just so much that the Lord is speaking in this, the timing of it all, the, the, um, the proximity in terms of time right. of when events are occurring, how close they're occurring together, all of these things. Um, he's speaking and he's speaking loud and clear. I was having a discussion and I'll, I'll, I'll stop here, but I was having a discussion uh, with a very prominent leader um, and uh, just sharing that these things, the person was just putting some information out there and asking my thoughts. And I said, these things, there is no question about it, that the Lord is speaking and he's speaking unmistakably. He's speaking loud and clear. There is no doubt. He, 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 this stuff you can't make this stuff up. So let's take a look at uh, the fact that after, just after the uh, eclipse, there's going to be uh, an invasion of cicadas. They're very similar to locusts. They're coming by the trillions, by the multiplied trillions across. Okay, so that was one of the Exodus judgments, right? Moses. Uh, released the the plague of locusts. They materialized and and devastated the crops. Hopefully these uh, cicadas won't devastate crops, but they're going to be freaky. I guarantee you. Okay, that <laughs> precedes the eclipse. What preceded the eclipse was three days beforehand an unprecedented earthquake. This unprecedented earthquake was similar to the unprecedented earthquake that rocked Washington, D.C. on um, oh. August 23rd of, of 2011, after we mm -hmm. prayed and we saw God come into covenant with our nation again. We asked for a sign that, that he had heard us. We asked for his hand in marriage on July 4th, 2023, divorced from our historic idolatry. And we said, as a sign that you have heard us, crack the hard shell of demonic resistance. And... Rick Ridings had had that prophetic word about a nutcracker that cracked the hard shell over Washington, D.C., the stronghold of resistance. So along comes 50 days later to the day, August 23rd, and the Washington Monument cracks in an earthquake measuring 5.8 on the Richter scale. Gargoyles topple from the National Cathedral. And there's more to that story, too, but it was an incredible sign that God had heard our cry and is indeed cracked the hard shell of demonic resistance, and he has married our land again. That was so, so encouraging. So fast forward to an, uh, another unprecedented earthquake, this time not as strong, 4.8 on the Richter scale, in New Jersey. Well, at first, they, the um, 
whatever service does this, the earthquake service, they <laughs> NGPS or something like that. I don't know. Uh, earthquakes are us. <laughs> there we go. Earthquakes are us. They said that the epicenter was Lebanon. I thought that was very interesting. Lebanon mm -hmm. was considering Lebanon, but then they moved it uh, to uh, the east a little bit to White House Station. The epicenter of this earthquake was in White House Station, New Jersey. And it rocked all of New York City from White House Station, New Jersey. That's crazy. We'll just leave that there, too. People <laughs> all the way as far as Maine, especially on Cape Cod and Boston, uh, throughout New England, but even as high, high as Maine and as, as, as far south as, as Virginia, Washington, yeah. D.C. got rocked. Did Absolutely. you feel it, Chris? We didn't feel it, but there was reports in all of Southern Hampton. Did you feel Mons, that? No, no. <laughs> yes, indeed. Norfolk, Virginia Beach, Chesapeake, all kind of reports coming in as, uh, down in Southern Virginia. Crazy. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. So then we find out that White House Station is only three miles away from the Trump National Golf Course in Bedminster, New Jersey. It's three miles away. It's considered part of the epicenter. <laughs> I mean, how, how, the Trump quake, right? I mean, seriously, we are in an election year. In this election year, just the fact that there is an eclipse and, you know, uh, we, we need to take it as a sign and we need to align according to what the book of Joel says you know, get on our face before God, repent of our sins, cry out for mercy to the Lord. But it's really strange that this earthquake, literally, White House Station rocked Washington, D.C. from White House Station. And it turns out that the land is owned by Donald J. Trump. In an election year, one president has... The ground has shifted accordingly. Now, I don't know what that means. Jolene doesn't want me to talk about it. <laughs> I don't know what Even it means. Even if we do know what it means, we're not going to say. I'm going to use the Chris Mitchell. We'll just leave that leave there. there. <laughs> you can make up your mind about that. Okay, so, but here's another freaky detail about this earthquake. It measured 4.8 on the Richter scale. Yep. Well... On Monday, April 8th, we had the eclipse. At 2.22, it began. April 8th is 4.8. The very magnitude of the earthquake conveyed the date three days later of this eclipse. I mean, it's like, are you kidding me? How in the world? How... And, and you know that when these eclipses come, you know, God set the universe in motion back in the day. I mean, like billions and billions of years ago, probably the dateless eternal past, according to Genesis, he set things in motion. And then for this quake to come right before and then the 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 uh, eclipse on an election year coming on April 8th. God knew that the United States would be in an election year, and he put the X marks the spot on the United States of America in Little Egypt at the exact time. Let me, uh, someone brought up, and we did read this passage, Exodus 4, 8. Thank you, Sarah, for giving this passage. Then oh. it will be, if they do not believe you, nor heed the message of my first sign, which was the first part of the X, that they may believe the message right. of the latter sign. And it shall be if they do not believe even these two signs or listen to your voice, that you shall take water from the river and pour it on the dry land. And that water which you take from the river will become blood on the dry land. How specific is that? Wow. So one solar eclipse formed one portion of the X. One sign. The next uh, solar eclipse, I'm going, I, that's like this. I'll just do it this way. Formed another 
portion of the X, and God is highlighting Exodus 4, 8 on this passage. And the passage before that is extraordinary as well. So it is a let my people go moment. And we have been praying into this. Uh, I, Chris, you remember back in the day when we were in the, the Trump International Hotel proclaiming this exodus, this marriage of the miracles of exodus with the miracles of Acts. And I don't know if we're, it's fully here right now, but we're definitely one step closer for sure. And God's calling forth his forerunners to take the lead in this, to understand the times and not just understand them, but to act on the times, to lead accordingly. So I believe even this Redeem America project, you know, when we uh, got together, um, I, I, I think it's five or six prayer networks, seven prayer networks on Yom Kippur, and we cried out the verdict mm. we were seeking for the, uh, the Lord to grant us amidst the challenges and upheaval, this quake that is now at hand, uh, the 2024 elections and um, so many things in concert with it, uh, where the enemy is going to try and X us out. God's going to use this time to establish his bridal canopy. He's going to restore his covenant covering. What we were praying for was a new birth of freedom for this nation. That was the verdict we requested. I think it's fascinating even. I don't fully understand all of what um, Chris Reed has put out there, but it, it was significant enough to me that he quoted Abraham Lincoln, a new birth of freedom for the nation, and the quake wow. was going to be a sign of it. Wow. That nine months after the quake comes the inauguration. Wow. And during that time, uh, there's a birth of a freedom movement. We have written about this freedom movement, talked about it since 2013 with our book, Crown and Throne. Every single book since then has chronicled it. And uh, we are here today to say, this is that which has been prophesied by the Lord. Yeah, and I just want to, if you don't have the book, Crown and Throne, the Lord's been speaking to me recently about mm -hmm. how much is prophetic in that book. 2013, we were prophesying, praying into, we have been forerunning this for 10 years and been on a established pattern. And the Lord just keeps saying to me, people need to get out the book, Crown and Throne again, yes. and read it and reread it because we are living in many, even the prayer movement shifting to um, the crown and throne movement, shifting to worship and intercession, coming together. There are so many things we prophesied and talked about in that book that are for this day and this hour. And I just, it's a shameless plug, but I think you should get the book and or you can order it on our website. And if you have it, get it out and read it again because it's absolute phenomenal how much was prophesied in that book that we are walking through today. Yeah, Jolene, I, I just I just want to add my voice to that because a couple of weeks ago I felt the same thing. I literally, it's a convergence of end time and real time. And uh, that book needs to be picked up off the shelf. It needs to be uh, <clears throat> ingested again and processed because we're seeing these things fleshed out in this day. What was spoken about, prophesied uh, into a decade ago, we're watching actually take place. And one of the things I want to point out, too, with this whole with uh, the concept of the new birth, John, is that. As we're moving through this time period, you you were giving this admonishment in the beginning of the broadcast and just talking about, listen, we have to engage this. We have to live in light of the season and times that we're living in. We have to actually let that inform the way that we live. And it's not enough to just know, but we have to actually begin to put footsteps that are in alignment with the truth that's Absolutely, been revealed. Chris. We gotta we gotta make decisions that are aligned with that. And so to that to that end, I want to say this that in this new birth, the old, a lot of what we have clung to, see, Israel's challenge was coming out of Egypt, 
that they still had a they had the uh, the reproach. And we've talked about this in previous broad, broadcasts. They had the stigma. They had all of these things from 400 years of living under the yoke of slavery that it started to warp their souls, their perception of the of themselves, distanced their um, ability to uh, appreciate the covenant that they had with God. All of those things had to fall by the wayside in order for them to embrace what God was doing. So true. It, and, wow. and I think that for all of us, too, as we're moving through this time period, I just want to encourage you to be mindful of that. The Lord is still in this time frame. He's still, as the passageway begins to narrow, I believe this is what Jesus was talking about in Matthew chapter seven, where he says, straight is the way, narrow is the path that leads to life. If you look at that close enough, it sounds a whole lot like a birth canal. And there are things that when 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 the way becomes compressed, uh, you better believe that the Lord is positioning a birthing. He's He's causing us to come into the very position that is necessary for us to be pushed into this next phase. But in order to do that, some some things have to be uh, put aside. Some things have to be um, we have to relinquish our clutches uh, on yesterday and even our own uh, accepted identities concerning ourselves and who we are. We have to allow, we got to hold those things very loosely in this season is all I'm saying, because the Lord is reshaping. He's causing us to get the focus is narrowing. The very thing that he created and designed you for, you're about to step into the realization of. You're going to be, you're going to become intimately acquainted with the thing that he that he uh, designed you for when he pulled you out of the quiver and put you in the arrow uh, in the hands of of him as the warrior. And so I just want to encourage you, allow the Lord to dial you in in this season. And don't clutch on to any other identification so tightly that he can't dial you in and into the place where you strike the mark and hit the bullseye. Right. It was so profound last week, Chris, when you talked about how it's like the 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 one shooting the arrow he had it out to here. That was a preparatory. And then the yep. final release, he had to pull that uh, yes, sir. string of the bow back uh, so that it would hit with force. And I'm telling you, this has been a targeted, targeted yes. hit with force kind of season. Again, you put all of this together. You can't make this stuff up. I want to go back to... Uh, a conversation or an experience that Jolene had back in uh, December 9th of 2023. Mm. She, we, we were praying over the word that Chuck Pierce gave about, you know, uh, December 10th being a time when the, the prophetic was going to be begin to change exponentially. And the Lord led us to an unusual place. He led us to Armageddon. Tell Megiddo. Five months later, we were honored to drag Chris Mitchell up the hill of Tel Megiddo so we could see the Jezreel Valley, otherwise known as the Megiddo Valley himself. And uh, it was a beautiful, beautiful day. It was the morning uh, light was just beginning to shine. Uh, the, the fields were glistening. Uh, there was this thick, thick, and even fragrant mist over the Jezreel Valley. So you could only see like halfway into the Jezreel Valley. The mountains on the other side and Nazareth were clouded. And we began to pray. And as we began to pray, the sun began to really shine so that by the end of our prayer time, we could see Mount Gilboa. We could see Tabor. We could see Mount Precipice uh, in Nazareth where Jesus was nearly thrown off the cliff. Jesus grew up praying over uh, the Megiddo Valley or the Jezreel Valley. He prayed over the valley that's known as the Valley of the Great War of God the Almighty. Uh, and we were at this watchman's perch. Tel Megiddo was actually uh, a watchman's perch over Armageddon. And you had an amazing, amazing vision. Yeah, I saw... I saw the time clock. Actually, I was looking right over the valley of um, the final uh, battle. 
And what I saw was I, it was 12, 10 on the calendar. And what I saw was on the time clock, the Lord had put it at 10 of 12 and he was superimposing 12, 10 with 10 of 12. And what he spoke to me is Jolene, it is 10 minutes to midnight. And, and what I got the sense in my spirit was that was not the time that Jesus returns the midnight time Jesus returns, but actually 10 minutes before the darkest hour that's about to come on the earth. And he basically began to speak to me about how we had, and then there was a different experience I have where this covenant of peace angel came down upon me and began to just envelop me in a, about an hour in this peace where I could not worry about one thing. I would try to worry about or think about something. I absolutely could not do it because this peace had, had come upon me. And that just reminds me of um, exactly the season. And God told me in, the, in that season, Jolene, be very careful what you do in these next times. Be focused on me. Be focused on what I'm doing. Make sure you're in prayer. And mostly make sure you're in repentance. And, the, and this is the scripture just, God just gave me. It's out of uh, Hebrews 12, 27. And it talks about the shakings. It says, see that you do not refuse him who speaks. Mm. For he has promised saying, yet once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. Come on. Now this yet once more indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as of things that are made, but the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom, what he's talking about, if you put everything in the kingdom, if you put everything yeah. that you have and let God erase and repent, this mm -hmm. is in the season of greatest repentance. Because guess what? God doesn't want us to shake during the shaking. That's right. He wants our foundation to be correct. Let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. And to me, what I believe is coming, God's been singing in my spirit for days now. Heaven is coming. Mm. Glory is coming. And guess what? When glory gets here and the consuming fire gets here, we want to have submitted everything yes. that we have and everything we are about to the Lord. Because when the shakings get here, those people who, who in shakings have already gone into the foundations of their home, have already yep. shored up the foundations, they do not get shaken in that moment. And there are many things coming that could possibly shake us. But God is saying, repent now, shore up your foundations. And when heaven comes, I've been hearing it and hearing it, Jolene, heaven's coming. And it goes back to what the Lord kept talking to John about with the national anthem about a heaven rescued land. Mm -hmm. There are mm -hmm. things that are going to come to us personally, and to this nation that only heaven can rescue us from. Man can't, the strength of man can't, right. the strength of, of your church can't, the strength of God will be the only thing. Heaven will have to rescue us in this time and in this season. So sure up. And, and we are still in that 10 minutes before midnight and it is getting darker. I mean, the eclipse just totally shows you, it totally eclipsed into total darkness. But the, it is not too late to shore up your foundation and get everything under the blood. To me, that's what this next 21 day mm. period, that's mm. what this next 40 day period that we've just talked about is all about. Get whatever sin and trespass is in your life underneath the blood of Jesus. Get under the Passover blood in this season. Mm.
And it's a good time for you to keep watch. I mean, it, I, I, with the midnight hour, you know, um, that we are obviously in, um, God gave us a word back in 2017 about how by 2020, by the year 2020, there'll be a series of midnight crises and how we uh, uh, confront the crises and overcome the crises will even become a roadmap, roadmap to believers in the very end of days. I mean, this is crazy stuff. I know this is wild. And, you know, it, none of this fits my theology. I'm like, I, I'm, I'm a real time guy. But to see the Lord begin to draw this intersection in between real time and, and end times is, is, is wild. Not just as far as I'm reading the scripture, seeing a, an um, earthquake or seeing a, a, an eclipse and, oh, it must be the end times. I No, that's not where we dwell at all. And the good news is God wants you to become a conqueror, one who not just uh, uh, hides out in your, your closet until the, the stuff's over, but you pioneer and prepare the way of the Lord in the midst. He wants you to be the ones with the burning, shining lamps at the midnight hour. Spiritual Paul Revere's holding out the burning lamp. Instead of saying the British are coming, you're going to be saying the Lord is coming. That's a word from Cindy Jacobs to us from back in 2000. Are you kidding? She prophesied that. Now, I, I'm not necessarily believing that we're going to see the literal return of Christ in our generation. But I'm telling you, God's called us to prepare lamplighters, to hold out the burning lamp of God's covenant, to keep the fire burning even when everybody else falls asleep. It's mm. your time to blaze mm. for Jesus. It's your time to become a spiritual revolutionary. It's your time to stand up against Pharaoh and say, let my people go. Beginning with your children, let my children go. And we are standing with you, contending with you, until they are moved by the Spirit of God, until they understand the Lord and understand the times in which they live to the extent they're like, yep, you're right, let's go. That's where we are right now. It's absolutely true, John, and 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 it's it's incredible to me to to uh, think about the reality that we are in a this is that era. I mean, we're literally watching things take place, and we can say, as Peter did, two thousand year almost two thousand years ago, we're watching the thing take place, and in real time, this is that that was spoken about. And not just even in the scriptures, there are things that just as we talked about, there are modern day scrolls, not equivalent with scripture. You, Everybody understands what I'm right. saying. Not on par or equivalent with scripture, right. but what God has spoken to us, highlighted from the authority of the scriptures and highlighted things to come, spoken about the days that we would live in. Some decade ago, we were just talking about one of them, crown and throne. And we're watching the very things that the Lord was speaking about then. We're watching them take place now. And so real time and, and in time, we're living in a moment where those things have synced up in an incredible way. And I just want to say to everyone that is watching, that is why if you watch the, the rhythms of how God deals with us and he brings us into the realization of certain things. There are certain time periods in our life where he emphasizes one thing. None of this is haphazard or mistaken because he is constantly, he never relinquishes his role as the good shepherd. He's always leading us okay. into the best, best pathways for our life to establish us on the firm foundation and in places where we stray or we're not exactly in sync with where he wants us to be. He gently will steer us back in. That's why we have to pay attention to the dealings of the spirit and when something gets emphasized, and especially corporately, when there's a corporate emphasis by the Holy Spirit on the church, we have to pay attention because there's a reason. There's a reason he's emphasizing these things in this hour. And I'm telling you that one of the things, Jolene, you just talked about Hebrews chapter 12, one of my favorite chapters in all of scripture, because it is a picture 
of what the open door of the flesh of Jesus actually brought us into. When Jesus said in John 10, I'm the door of the sheep, those that enter in through me, they're going to go in and out and find pasture. The whole expanse of my kingdom and what my covenant affords them opens and hinges on, on what I'm about to do on this cross. And I'm going to I'm going to take them from the, out of the clutches and the bondages of darkness. And I'm going to convey them through the door of my flesh into the kingdom of, of my love. And that's where he's placed us in an unshakable kingdom. And so there is no fear that accompanies the body when we walk through these times in history because of where we have been seated. And that's why there was an emphasis about this over the last several weeks, John, as you've emphasized, take your seat. The Holy Spirit is doing this for a reason. He's awakening us to the reality that Hebrews 12, 22 through 24 points to which you have come, and you've heard, heard, heard us talk about this many times, you have come, not you are going. This is not an es eschatological statement. It is a present reality. It is not somewhere off in the future. You have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the great king. And so we're learning in this hour in a very real way, John, how to lean into that reality, react from that place, decide from that place, move from that place. And the last thing I'll say is this. Jesus said this in Matthew 7, 24. He said, what shall I liken the man who hears these words of mine and does them? Yeah, Chris. Hears these words of mine and does them. Lives in light of them. He's like a man who built his house on the rock. And when the winds and the waves came, they could not prevail against it. That's why we have to live in light of the truth that God is emphasizing, align our choices, our actions. I know I keep emphasizing this, but I feel an urgency in my spirit to say, let's begin to move and live in light of what the Lord has done and what he's saying. Amen. With that, Chris, can you pray and close us out? Absolutely. So Father, we thank you today that you don't leave us in the dark. You don't leave us ignorant. You don't leave us without the insight. We thank you for the prophetic spirit in us, the person of the Holy Spirit, the third person of the triune Godhead who knows the full counsel and mind of the Father and through whom you've given us the very mind of Christ. And so, Lord, we thank you that the higher thoughts of your mind that surpass our own understanding and ability to comprehend, according to Isaiah 55, we thank you that we begin to apprehend the thoughts of your heart, and that you cause us, Lord, to, to respond in kind, that we live out of that place. Lord, I thank you for every person that is connected and watching today. And I, I Father, I just release blessing over them, their household, their children, and their children's children. I thank you for the covenant that we have through your son. And Lord, we lay hold to it in all that it affords us in this hour. Lord, we thank you that you are our habitation. Wow. Deuteronomy 33, 27, you are our habitation forever. You've always been our dwelling place. And we thank you, Lord, for, for causing us to rest and abide in that place today. And also, lastly, Lord, I thank you for John and Jolene Hamill. I thank you for the gift that they are to me, to your body, I thank you, Father, for the great blessing of knowing them and walking with them, Lord. And we just release honor over them both today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, amen. Chris. It means a lot. We love running with you too, my friend. All right. Well, there's only one more thing to say, and that is no king but Jesus. And have a good day. Have a good day. <laughs> we love you guys. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this, please share it with uh, folks of like precious faith. Share it on your social networks. Share it on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram and all the other grams that are out there. Let's get the <laughs> word out. And uh, um, I want to say thank you for watching today. Very, very weighty. Blessed is the presence of the Lord.